Joey, at this point in my life, I'm kind of bummed out. You're bummed out? I'm kind of bummed out that I've never puked on camera. <laughs> that was not what I was expecting. Because, like, at this point, Andy, Tim, I'm yeah. too established. If I yeah. just went <laughs> and threw up myself right now, people, Greg being Greg. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wouldn't but be like, like it's a bit. No, yeah, it wouldn't. It, yeah, it would be a bit. People wouldn't like. I wouldn't surprise anybody anymore. No, but what? The lead up to it, maybe is that surprise? In what <laughs> scenario? <laughs> that like no. I'm like a cat. That lead up? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, are you just? Do you not? Don't you hate throwing up? Or is that? Just I mean, who loves it? Who but I mean, like mind? you know, yeah. I'm not like Draws puking on command. Like it's like it's Draws. You remember Draws? No. No, oh, he was a wrestler, right? He came in the WWE as puke. Uh, he was, he, if you don't, here's two things he's famous for. Uh -huh. Set, and they're not good. One's not good. It's, oh. He was injured in the ring. It was tr a tragic accident that paralyzed him. Jesus uh, Christ. But what happened is he got paralyzed right as the movie Beyond the Mat was about to come out. And Beyond the Mat chronicled him, like, coming through the indie scene, getting to the, not, like, touched on it. And then did his interview, and Vince McMahon made him, he could puke on command. So that Vince McMahon made him puke during his, like, interview with the WWE when he got signed. Oh. And then they introduced him as puke. But then they had to put a thing in like he got injured at the end of the thing. Wow. Just passed away not too long ago. We took oh, a turn here. Oh, jeez. But like, no, yeah, but like, wow. he was an inspiring story. Jaws was a great yeah. dude. Like, you know what I mean? Because he got injured and then still like talked about wrestling for a long time. and was still active. I, I'm glad you're not a puke guy because I always just think of how regular it is. <laughs> like, can we just talk about how we went from puke to me giving you all this Jaws information? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't like how regular it is. I'm so out of focus. <laughs> It's like I'm, right? I'm, I'm working on it. I got the program. Um, I mean, Kevin, I'm in great focus, so it doesn't matter. Because this kind of makes it look like Andy's like a figment of my imagination. <laughs> it kind of does, yeah. Um, yeah. The, how regular puking is in Jackass. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, I would like... Not my favorite humor. It's no. the worst humor. Yeah. And like, Are you that's, one of those people that like, if you... I don't hold your hand enough, Joey. I don't that recently. <laughs> By enough at all. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, never, uh, never until this moment. <laughs> Oh, you want to speak? Anybody here? Like, if you oh, hear, Kev? Uh, sorry, Joey, can you move the mic a little closer to you? Like that? Yeah, because when you turn over, oh, when to you Greg, turn, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. you there. Yeah, are you, is anybody one of those people that, like, when they hear a puking, they they start a puking? <laughs> kind of. With me, it's more of seeing it in action, sure. seeing the spewing. That's where I I just what a like, word. I have to turn away. Yeah, it's the smell for me. Yeah, oh, the bile. Yes. Yeah, you know, I, I uh, earlier some I think you were saying, don't you like really hate throwing up? I am like terrified of throwing up. Oh like, yeah. It's, for some reason, when I was little, I like it was just like me too. The last thing that I ever wanted to happen, which I know everyone's like, oh, we're all like that. I'm like, I was afraid of it. Like I would fucking cry <laughs> if I thought I might throw. You've up. heard the stories with me in the bowl, where I, I you know I threw up in the bowl when I was sick, and then I got so worried about the bowl, you couldn't take the bowl away. If you took the bowl away, I'd puke because I'd get so anxious. Yeah, God, that is such a Greg story. <laughs> yeah. Makes so much. My sense. mom would give me minty gum. After you puked or while you're puking? While, uh, while I was feeling like I'm puking. Oh, sure. The spearmint there. Oh, like and, it, and it worked. Like, I was oh. always so shocked by how well that shit worked, where I, I'll never forget being at a Walmart, and I felt it. Uh -oh. And I felt like, I was like, you ran my mouth gum. started getting super watery. I was like, Mom, I'm going to throw up right now. And I was, I was like, this, this is not where I want to be when I vomit. I wish I was in the parking lot or anywhere else, right? Sure. She gave me that spearmint gum, chewed it. I was like, "Holy shit, that worked!" And it was like the f like one of those instant gratification things of I'm gonna remember this forever. I'm yeah. gonna remember that mint will deter the sort of like vibe of wanting to vomit. Because yeah, look, there's times where Where's I wake up in the middle of the night after uh, eating a lot of like pizza or Here. something with Here. spicy Acidic. marinara sort of red sauce. Oh, yeah, you're you, you get the huh. What? It's a it's a callback to kind of feed you weren't on it. Mm. You get the you get the burps, you get the you know. And there the are times socks. where I wake up and it's like, I think it's happening right now, <laughs> you know, like, and I'll burp and I'll taste the taste that you normally get mm -hmm. whenever that's about Wild. to happen. Mister Harper used to call them herpes, or uh, no, yeah, bur bur yeah, herpes or whatever, where you, you you burp a bit and you throw up a bit. <laughs> I hate. But that. How, there's no like word. I forget. Maybe I'm getting it wrong. <laughs> I don't know if Mr. Harper still works. Let me check if he still works in my high he's school. Still alive? Oh my well, he's got to be alive. Yeah. Back like, your thing. <laughs> it, it is weird, though, because like in my life, I was so scared of it as a kid. And something about that, like I feel like I've won. Like I beat vomiting. Where I, I can name every time that I vomited in pretty much my entire life. 
And like it happened. No way. Yeah. I mean, how many times you vomited? Le- legitimately. I'm with you. The last two times I've thrown up that like are at all relevant to my life were I got food poisoning in 2016. 21st birthday. Uh, no. Uh, mm-hmm. When Prince of Persia Sands of Time came out sure. in mm-hmm. 2003. I've never thrown up because of alcohol ever. Wow. Not a single that time. That is incredibly impressive. I, mean, I don't know if it is. I, other, I, I think it's not that I don't drink. <laughs> it's just, I'm very hungover. I yeah. just don't throw up because I think I'm so scared of it. Oh, see, I'm yeah. the opposite where like once we were like going out and drinking and figuring out what your limits are and stuff like that, I felt like I didn't throw up at all before that. And then the first time I threw up from drinking, then it just became my body's automatic response anytime. Mm, mm. So like it hap- it's like it happens like way more often than i would ever want it to happen to a point where it's like well this is kind of embarrassing i think also it's the fear in me tim i had the same fear of it that i avoided alcohol that much like in a i i know when i'm gonna when i'm getting to a limit where i might want to throw up that i i don't even i don't let it get there tim yeah i I don't want it to get can't let it get i get it anything but that yeah because like that's like the the number one fear i have is just that feeling of your eyes are watery, your it's in your nose, you just feel like shit. It just ruins your damn day. But I'm like you, I can probably name every time it's happened. Twenty first birthday. Before that I was like eighteen. We we're all underage and stupid. And then like, I don't know, one time at school or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like it's very, very select and rare. But I have friends that are drink often and often vomit it's like god damn it's so it's such a normal thing for you that i could never ever that's why i don't drink as much anymore because i'm like i can't do this anymore this is not fun and it's like even if i have like two it's usually if i have like three drinks i'm like why like this isn't i don't even you're rolling the dice here fun drunk you don't get the drunk stage you just get the like i feel like shit afterwards that's why i don't (laughs) yeah usually just like a nasty uh hangover after the fact did you follow up mr patterson yeah, Mr. Harper, I, oh. he's still at my high school as of 2020. I can find an article there. That's good. But I can't find anything beyond that right now, you know? Survived all the layoffs, survived the strike. There's an article here in the Daily Herald about him. Maybe that it talks about herpes. <laughs> you think he chronicled it? <laughs> you, think he chronicled you know, that's just that one of those things they want to make sure. Oh, I gotta put it. You gotta fucking subscribe to the Daily Herald now. Come on. Mm. You know what I mean? Back, Back in my, in my day, day <laughs> you could just go there and get the thing. Are you, uh, anybody watching Shark Week? Anybody? No. Andy, you know, I, it's not the same, but we've been giving a lot of shit to this guy, Nick Scarpino, about the show Suits. You know, yeah. it all started from a legit, hilarious scene of Nick watching Suits at work, which there's nothing wrong with. It's just very funny. Yeah. It's just so random and out of place that it's like, this makes no sense. It's funny. That was him watching it on set before. And that, it's, it's, th- that was like the, look. This is my last chance to watch. I need. There's a dedication to it. Like Nick was watching Suits on set as that if day. Was a deadline. As if uh, a new Marvel trailer just dropped. <laughs> and I'm trying to watch it before I get. I do the thing. Yeah, that. yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. that's what it was. It's I that think, that's funny. It's also that Nick is like doesn't wear headphones at the office very and often. There's all these factors together. So it's always like, oh, when he does, it's like something big. And <laughs> it's just. It's just, just suits. I don't want to say just the USA show. It's suits. <laughs> yeah. um, but we had a similar moment with Andy yesterday. Uh, not as dialed in and specific and not as out of the norm. But Eddie was just like, is anyone watching Shark Week on YouTube TV? Yeah, because check it out, Greg. When, yeah. if, Did- if you watch YouTube, if you watch Shark Week on YouTube TV Discovery Channel. Sure. The little uh, yeah, marker that shows. I hated in high school still there. Uh, idiot. You know what I mean? Fuck you. Slash your tire. No, what? No. The little marker that shows you where you're at in the video. It's yeah. A little shark fin. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, it's really, really cute. It's oh, yeah. Bachelor cute. is it's a little rose. rose. Oh. When you were yeah. telling us this, though, I don't know if you said it or if I just heard you say shark tank. And I was like, <laughs> Andy's re- like, Nick's watching suits. Andy's watching shark tank yeah. in the middle of the day. Joey's like, what a weird part of Andy <laughs> lore. I didn't know that Andy was super into shark tank. Dude, I could watch it was shark tank. Cuban stuff, though. I figured, like, maybe yeah. that. My entire life. Like, really? I, I fucking love that show. Like, I this only, new Tim Moore. only watched it on airplanes. I've never actually, I, there's one time I watched it at home recently because one of Gia's former co workers uh, pitched something. Oh, and, that's cool. and, like, it, one of them invested and like oh it's doing God. really wow. well. Neato. They got the, like the follow up episode and all that stuff. So that's just pretty cool. Um, but there's something about Shark Tank that I, it just fucking gives me everything that I want because I get to 
uh, hear people that are way smarter than me do business deals and, and do all that stuff and start talking about numbers and shit in a very succession-y way. That's fun. Yeah. Their personalities are like hilarious and horrible in like all the right ways that you'd want from a reality show like this, game show type thing. And the pitches are either brilliant or the dumbest things ever. <laughs> and I love that there's always a good balance. Every episode I'm entertained throughout where I'm either making fun of or rooting for these people. What I can't believe is that you're just watching this at home, raw dog in it, all right? The shark tank yes. is a lot like ginger ale, where I'm only drinking a ginger ale on a plane. I'm only watching That's shark tank. Or headline, what's the other one? The 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 forensic files in the hotel room. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. That's yeah. what it's all about. That's what it, I'm not just watching this willy nilly wherever. Yeah. I gotta, I like I said, I've only seen it on the plane except for Gia's friends. Episode. But see, I'm doing it I, in the hotel. Oh, you're oh oh. The hotel is where this is. You get there, huh. turn up the AC if it's not already cranked, and you're putting Shark Tank or forensic files on. Yeah, you're putting yeah. that AC at 58 degrees. Yeah. You know? Fuck this place. They I charge give- how much for a room? I'll get my money back. <laughs> <laughs> I have to give Andy credit. Before, maybe when we were doing Mission Impossible in review, or uh, maybe the lead up to me watching all of them, you were like, Mission Impossible on every hotel. I was like, Joe, now that you've caught up, (laughs) you can now experience what it's like to be in a hotel room and watch Mission Impossible. Because Mm -hmm. everywhere in the world, if you're in a hotel room, Mission Impossible will be on FX or on TNT or on some. And like legitimately three days later, Joey was in L.A. and was like. Wow, you were right, Andy. <laughs> yep. Watching MI3, man, it's awesome. I did choose to watch John Wick 4 instead. That's a good call. Yeah, John Wick 4. The second one. I, I want to admit something to all you guys. About time. That I feel like some of you might be like, yeah, that You took up. the avocado, didn't you? And, oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, you wait. imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I love how ready he is. Holy Keeps shit. me up at night, all right? <laughs> Some people are like, what really happened to the submersible? I'm like, what happened to that fucking avocado? I, that I is... just picture Greg in shadow in a rocking chair. <laughs> like, yeah. like, Dude, you know, this. I, I'm going to go on a tangent. I want to get back to what I was saying in a second. But yesterday, I don't think this is spoiling anything because I don't think we even talked about it on content. But Greg has been planning a prank for Andy <laughs> for a while. All right. I don't even know what some this is. KF podcast. I want to no, say it was no, Games no, Cast or in review. Yeah, it was. It, you were all wrong. Actually, it was in fact a kind of feudy where I started oh. giggling at the launch, and you said, "What is?" Go-? Right, it was right before we went live, and you talked about it on kind of feudy, and you said, "What?" I, I started giggling, and I said, "I enjoy." I was like, "I have ordered the ingredient for the greatest <laughs> prank of all time." This is different from the other prank you were planning. Oh, we already know that one. That was. Which one? That was the movie theater. The movie one. theater one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This no, this is this is a different. new prank. Okay. And, I, and this one, and this is going to affect one Andy Cortez. Yeah, yeah they were like, "Who's going to be?" All of us like, "Oh my god!" But the fact that Gray said he he's ordered the ingredient, it's like, "Oh my god!" So that was months ago. Um, <laughs> yesterday, we're we're having a, a a normal day, which is hectic here at Kind of Funny, and we're walking on set to get to Gamescast. Greg walks next to me in the most hushed, panicked way I've ever seen him interact with me. This is not the way Greg talks to me ever. He <laughs> kind of walks next to me and like in that, that like loud whisper type voice, it's just like, hey, I need you to keep Andy in this in the other room. Don't let him come in here. Don't let him look through into the, the window through the control room. Just 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 keep him busy over there. And I was like, okay. And he <laughs> mentioned something like it's I'm doing the prank immediately I have my fucking That's So Raven flashback you know, <laughs> the ingredient being ordered and all of this. I need everybody to know the panic that sets in for me of like, it's the fight or flight, but it's more like, defend Andy or not. Yeah. I don't know what this prank is. I do not know what I am assisting Greg in doing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm now rolling the accomplice. dice here. Andy likes me. I, mm-hmm. I, I feel like Andy likes me. <laughs> I'm like, like, do I want to lose? I, I do feel more often than not, if there was like a very sinister prank, Tim would be like, Andy, you better watch out for the what's about to happen to you. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I, I, what, what's, how much of Andy's trust and friendship is worth me losing for Greg Miller to just trust in Greg Miller? And something told me, just trust Greg. Trust in Greg Miller. Just trust in Greg. And it was awesome because I went out there, distracted Andy, didn't need to do much, but we got the job done. <laughs> Greg comes over here. Do you want to explain the prank from here? Well, so what I'm, so yeah. Did this unfold on Kind of Feudy? Sadly, no. Okay. Andy, Andy was, I'll tell you what. This was a prank that I, I was like, I wish it's either going to immediately be over or I'm going to get a month out of it. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it was immediately over, sadly. Uh. So what it was is that when we went to the Giants game, 
uh, Snow Mike Mike, as he normally would, went and wasted a lot of money and bought a bunch of baseball cards. And one of them was a Greg Maddox card that Andy became got in possession and then put in his phone case. Yeah. And so one this day... This phone case is clear. Yeah. So it's like you can see... Yeah. Which, by the way, I still don't know. What, I was I looking know, on yeah, your desk. Sorry about it. I, I, when we started the end of this, I was like, I never gave you back the card. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it was, uh, yeah, right. I, uh, you know, I had seen the, him put it in there, and blah, blah. And on that walk into kind of feudy, chuckled to myself and went on eBay, and I ordered a John Rocker card. <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to know John Rocker, <laughs> but in the same way I only know John Stockton to connect with Andy, yeah. I only know John Rocker <laughs> as an Atlanta Brave, and I only know John Rocker as an Atlanta Brave <laughs> because he was, hor- he was a racist. He was said all his horrible <laughs> shit when it was like a huge deal like late 90s early yeah, late 90s, oh, aught, baseball where people yeah. were still like well i don't know he's not saying yeah. the n-word he's just saying these people are horrible and we're like no no that's horrible kick him off the team and the team's yeah. like oh, i don't he's know he's like a meme of a player uh i was telling tim to look up footage of john rocker because he was a survivor oh what john rocker would do you know when a closer comes out joe uh, you know manager co- manager notices the pitcher needs the closer to come in and he kind of walks out, rings a, calls a bullpen, walks out and goes, you know, waves his hand. He's yeah, like, I want yeah. the righty and bring in the righty. Normally a closer, you think like wild thing. Wild thing. From Major League or whatever. Opens the gate, just kind of walks out. So yeah. John Rocker would full sprint like a fucking crackhead. Like this dude looked like he was just on every drug possible eyes wide open he'd be sprinting to the pitching man it was hilarious it became like a whoa this guy is like an animated dude how hilarious and he was also really really good and then he said some really racist shit about people in new york and i was like god fucking crap god damn it but But that's the whole thing where yeah he he still played after this for a while yeah he still played for several yeah for a while but it's always John Rock has always been kind of like the funny player that Greg and I, I always have tossed him out. I always tossed him out, yeah, <laughs> like John Rock or whatever. So I ordered John Rocker's baseball card off eBay for ninety nine cents. <laughs> and so not yeah, big demand. Then it was all right. I'm going to put it in the case when Andy's not looking. And there was like literally a Thursday where it was sit after I ordered where he left it there all stream long. And I'm like, this is going to be so easy. Yeah. And then weeks went. I got the card, got there on Friday. <laughs> weeks went by, and Andy just did not leave his phone unattended forever. <laughs> or at least I didn't see it or around. so yeah. like when i came in to do the show yesterday and i saw it there i immediately ran out got the thing and he was already mid-conversation somebody and i was grabbed him like do not admit it and so i slipped the card in the perfect switcheroo and then andy got on his phone and was using it and i was like oh my god this is so great and the <laughs> first time he turned it over he's like did you put in john <laughs> but he he did like the most genuine andy laugh like andy doesn't fake a laugh but it was like the most real belly like this caught him it off got me good yeah. it got me good man i man, I, I regret it not being on camera just it like, was so close we were like a minute yeah. away from it being on camera yeah which by the way i still have to edit that other prank that we pulled on tim that uh kevin sent me the footage for like nine months ago eight months ago oh, yeah just you still have that folder which one? yeah i have it too um, you know that you had a prank pulled on you? Because <laughs> you don't look like you. No, know. he did. He knows. He knows. The Fast it and Furious was, yeah. prank. Oh. Oh, oh, no. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah so fun. for the longest time, uh, Tim has that little um, diorama. scale model. Tam, Tam bought me a, a small little diorama of the Toretto household yeah. from, as featured in the Fast and Furious. So it's like a little diorama of like the Toretto house, and in the backyard, there's like the little picnic table they have their, little their little barbecues at, and... and um, we all went to Target one day and we were like, what if we bought a bunch of like mini cars that fit with the other cars there? Cause you have Dom's like charger there or whatever. What if we bought a bunch of other cars that we could just like each day put a new vehicle on there and see when Tim notices. I'm like, all right. So they're like the cars we bought were like normal cars at the beginning, but then we had to buy extras. So <laughs> they eventually so became like a helicopter in like random transformers, little vehicles or whatever. And you know, we cat we, we cataloged it for about like five days. It wasn't a helicopter, Andy. It was blackout as oh. featured in Transformers 2007. <laughs> it was blackout. <laughs> so we have a bunch of little figurines that we're just like each day. Kevin would record. I'd be like, all right, day number four, we're adding this car. And I'll put that right there. And we have another Dom's charger. Dom, Dom has two cars now. <laughs> and eventually around like day five or six, Tim was like, well, who the fuck? What is all this stuff on this door thing? <laughs> and we were like, oh, yes. And then uh, Kevin has the the ring doorbell or like the, yeah, yeah. the security cam footage of Tim kind of like 
looking at the toys and discovering that it's all there. It was a great moment. So good. So <laughs> he good. was like, he was like, it was genuine surprise and shock. It, it was, was awesome. it was just weird. And then, like, I remember then everyone had like plans of how far they were gonna take the prank, where people were eventually wanted to buy a second house <laughs> and put it next to it. <laughs> I like, wanted no. to buy a second house. We did buy a second yeah, house. Yeah, we did buy a second house. <laughs> Love it. We yeah. were getting to the point where we were like, we have to buy like those full like standee height like. Dom and uh, Jason Momoa. There were so many different cars there. It wasn't just Fast and Furious cars. It was just random vehicles that had nothing to do with the universe. But yeah. they all kind of fit in the little Oh, totally, hustle. man. Yeah. Everybody was there. It was a big pachanga. <laughs> a big party. <laughs> exactly. I like to think of this as a big party. Yeah. What is because that? this is the kind of funny podcast each and every week. Four, sometimes five best friends gather on this table. Each coming to hang out with each other about whatever it is they want to hang out about. Mm-hmm. Can you believe that in the meeting we just had, Nick was like, I'm glad to see you're drinking water. I can drink water all the time. He's like, no, I've never seen you with a Nalgene bottle before. I'm like, I, I have a big one with a brown top. This is just a new bottle, but I've been drinking out of this my entire... And he's like, no, nah, that didn't happen. And he wasn't like joking. He wasn't. He was just being oblivious, <laughs> Nick. You know what I mean? I don't know. When Andy wore glasses. Dude sucks. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is kind of funny podcast. BS about whatever. If you like that, of course, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you could watch it live and ad free as we record it. Like Madeline Stanley is, Cody Hagler, the Instagram failure is, and of course, Punk Defied is. Uh, if you want to watch it later on patreon.com slash kind of funny without any ads, of course you can. You can get it as an MP3. You can get more than 300 exclusive episodes of content we've done since we launched the Spare Bedroom in October. Wow. Of course, you can get access to every other podcast we record record live as we recorded a day before it goes anywhere else <laughs> you can get games daily on command you can get all sorts of stuff that's all there it's all there ad free mm-hmm. having a great time however if you have no bucks to toss away no big deal each and every episode of the kind of funny podcast posts on youtube.com slash kind of funny podcast services around the globe chock full of ads Fuck you. <laughs> you know what i mean hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. you gotta pay these people somehow um housekeeping for you oppenheimer and Barbie in Review are live. They're separate Both episodes, yeah. but you can get them on the In Review podcast feed or YouTube.com slash kind of funny. Of course, shout out for recreating a Barbie set. Oh, yeah. uh, that TikTok just okay. went live, but you can, of course, watch the beginning of Barbie in Review to see them start on the original Barbie studio set, which is disturbingly close to our studio. And then Kevin spent a long time getting it perfect over there. They pan up to the actual set. It's amazing. It's so good. I Honestly, Oppenheimer in review and uh, Barbie in review were just great. I feel like we've been doing a lot of great interviews recently, but those two for very different reasons. Sure. I, like, I thought Oppenheimer was a great conversation. I think that like we talked about that movie differently than we talk about a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, and then with... Uh, Barbie, we just had so much fun, man. Like mm-hmm. that was it was a blast. Definitely recommend checking out at least the intro like Greg's talking about. But stick around for the whole thing. It's fun. There's some extra surprises later on that you'll <laughs> want to see. <laughs> Creepy. Uh if that is enough in review for you, we are returning to the MCU in review. Of course, Tim and a bunch of different guests mm-hmm. have been doing screencasts, keeping you up to date on Secret Invasion episode by episode. But the finale is this week. It is. And we're recording MCU in review this week. We are. Yeah, is my plan is week, there'll be there will be a screencast that records tomorrow, so Wednesday, uh, whenever you're listening to this, uh, of the finale of Secret Invasion that will be me and Anthony Carboni and hey! Woo! 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 about that new new take on this show, Spider Boy and the Queen of Halloween. Exactly, and then um, it will be next week that um, Secret Invasion in review will go up with the whole. Normal crew. Can they watch it live as we record it on Thursday um, on Patreon? Uh, yes. I All think right, we're great. recording Perfect. it on Friday this week. But yes. Yes. Maybe it's Thursday. I don't know. Thursday. It's Thursday. Thank you. I looked at the calendar. Thanks, Joe. You did. Nobody thinks I do you my did. job. You mean like in head. two days? Yeah. Cool. You have to watch and on Secret that, Invasion. And I was going to say, you want to, you guys were in here recording Barbie yesterday. I was getting ahead, actually doing my emails, sending some stuff on the calendar. And I looked and saw that. I literally went, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. slacked Jen and me, like, you know how much Secret Invasion I got to watch right now? And yeah. I'll tell you what I did. I said, you know what, Jen? We had already watched episode one. She fell asleep during it. I was like, we're going to go down. We're going to play Diablo tonight in second screen. We're going to do some secret invasion. Mm-hmm. Last night, Ben was hard going down. So he, Jen's like, I'm tapped out. I'm not doing it. I'm like, I'm going to go downstairs and second secret screen secret invasion. And on my phone, I'll play a little bit of DC uh, mm-hmm. heroes and mm-hmm. villains. Then I'll, I'll transition to Diablo. And what happened is got about midway through episode two secret invasion. I was like, all right, put it on the big screen. I put it on the big screen, Tim, to watch it. I, I watched. It. I watched up there, and I watched it. I, I got the. Well, I guess I have two episodes to watch. But one's not like, out I'm yet. on episode five, bro. I don't know where you. <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> what, what, what I'm very excited about um, 
this is going to be the first time we're doing MCU in review for a show like this, where Greg's going to do the plot for the show, but he hasn't. we haven't been doing the weekly uh, recaps, so I think it'll be a lot, and he's watching it all binging to get to it, so I think it's going to feel more like reviewing a movie as opposed to how we normally do the shows. It's mm-hmm. kind of just like a wrap-up. Blah, blah. You heard our thoughts, whatever, so yeah. I'm excited for it. I think that I know there's a lot of people not watching Secret Invasion, so I feel like uh, watching MCU in review Secret Invasion might be able to... Be good enough for you. You don't even need to watch the show. Oh, you know how good. You, you know, I mean, I get all the plot points in there. Mm-hmm. I'll be all about it. Don't you're worry gonna be all it. about it. Yeah, yeah. I know all about it. Everybody watch Iron Man three. Are you gonna be fucking lost? Yeah. What's happening in this goddamn <laughs> shit? So and right. Guardians. Yeah. Star Wars comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you? And he's like, no, get out of here. I'm a scroll. <laughs> uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, James Hastings, Casey Andrew, Nathan Lamoth. They were brought to you by Honey, BetterHelp, and Shady Rays. We'll talk about that later. Joe, you had a topic you want to talk about. What was it? <laughs> I real, did. Real, I think it was me. <laughs> oh, okay. I was joking around. I was, I was, so like, oh, I was like, I come up with something. The, the, the uh, confession that I wanted to make to you. Oh, guys, yes. That again, I think it won't surprise some of you, but will offend others. I haven't turned a TV on in a hotel ever. What? what? Ever? What are you talking about? I, I mean, there must be exceptions to that of like randomly like somebody asking you to do something or like like what are you, are you going to the gym or the pool what back doing? back when i was at a um a little kid and there'd be like the n64 that yeah. was yeah. attached to it whatever like i sure i would turn on tv then when i was little but like in my adult life since i've started traveling for work or anything sure not a single time have i turned the tv on so what, is wrong? what about with gia in the room g lives her own life g g has tv on a thousand percent <laughs> of the time like okay. No one on this planet watches more TV than G. Okay. She sees everything. Every fucking thing. She's and a she's watcher. A, she is, man. <laughs> and she's a complete Gia and John dude. Drake watch everything. And I don't understand because they also are two of like the busiest people I feel like I It's know. wild. I don't understand. I mean, I know how she does it. It's like how Tam knows about everything sort of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. But the thing is, I don't get it because she's working with TV on and somehow... I'll quit. I'll you know. I'll do the asshole thing. I'll be like, so what happened here? What happened in this episode? Whatever. And she fucking knows. Wow. Like she's paying attention in ways that I just I can't comprehend, y'all. Um, but yeah, at, at hotels, I guess I, she, I. But she's more of a phone person. She always just has her TV on the phone, like oh. walking around with. So it. wait, hold on. So is it that you've never been around a turned on TV in a hotel, or is it that you've never physically done it yourself? Because is she the one turning it on? No, I. The other way to say it is, I never watch TV at a hotel. Ever. You don't just have it on as, like, background noise while no. you're, like... That's just not my MO. It's the what thing... What do you do? I don't think this is that crazy. Because I would say, overwhelmingly, I don't have the TV on in my hotel room. Because if I'm there, I'm usually getting ready to do something or going to bed, right? So, and if I'm going to wake up and I have work to do, I'm just onto the computer, I don't turn it on. It's, I, I have done it in the past year of trips where I definitely had a... Tucked myself into bed. I'm like, oh, I'll have a treat. Let's turn on Forensic <laughs> Files. Because G- when Jen's there, Forensic Files is on. When we traveled with Porty, extra. The, uh, the, uh, the extra, eh, extra with Mario Lopez. <laughs> we would just let that loop. So there was, while we went out, Porty would have something on TV to cover up. just catch it up on the celebrity goss. I love it. Oh, we always joked around about how much he knew about Mario Lopez. That is you know what I mean? so funny. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, love yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, I guess this just goes back to the type of people we are just in our normal lives. Like, not even in hotel lives. Like, I... I am not a multitasker. Like, I like to put all my focus into whatever it is. And, like, this has been a problem for me for a very long time of, like, I like reading comics. I like watching TV. I like playing games. I like listening to music. I can't do multiple of those same things at the same time. Like, I I can't listen to music while working. Like, I listen to music. Like, it just distracts me too much. You stare at the wall while you listen? Honestly, <laughs> like, more of that than anything. Or, like, following along with lyrics. Like, I engage with it in a, in a way that like i feel weird when, about if i don't have a tv on in a hotel it feels unalive mm. like it's just silent i need the tv on to get ready in the morning or else i feel like i don't know it just feels like if i don't have the tv on like i am only there to maybe do work or i'm only there to it feels like so serious. I turn the movie, the TV on basically for background noise. Do I still have Levitard show on my phone going with the podcast? Yeah. I don't have the TV on like super high volume or whatever, but it makes it feel like awake. It makes the room feel like, all right, everybody's awake now. The house is awake now sort of thing. <laughs> and like I shower with the TV, like the ha- I have to have the TV on as well. Like 
I'm not like someone like Mike where I'd leave it on when I go to sleep or whatever, but like Gia. I feel like I need the TV on to feel more awake. It's, uh, I don't know, it's weird. It's like when, it's like when you go back and stay at your parents' house and everybody in the house is doing something and the house, like, it's like, all right, well, I'm awake now sort of thing. That's how I kind of feel like the TV is like, it, it hmm. adds energy to me, everybody. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not me. No, I don't need that. I don't need that at all. I'm ready to take on the day. Let's go. I like when I like a good slow hotel room when you're in there and you got like, oh man, this two and a half hours feels like two and a half hours. Yeah. When I went, uh, where did you, you mean a good slow hotel room? Where the time moves slower. Huh. You know what I mean? Where it's not fast. <laughs> Is that something you pay for? Is no, it? <laughs> I would. I'd pay the extra fee for it. When I went to San Diego this time around, I took a nap in the afternoon. Oh. Dynamite. You know what I mean? And I had that amazing moment where I set the alarm for 545. And I woke up and I rolled over and it was 4.45. And I was like, oh, oh yes. Oh, yeah, Thank dude. you, God. I mean, that was me at Summer Game Fest when I went back to the hotel room because I knew I'm going to take this nap right now. Because I know we're going to this Xbox party tonight and I want to be a little bit more awake for it. Somewhere to WrestleMania. I was going to say, like, WrestleMania <laughs> when you slept through WrestleMania because you wanted a nap. I got, the, you know, I got there like an hour late or whatever. You know, that's a pre-show. Pre-show. Greg was on it. I've already seen him. Fine. I met the guy. I work with the guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> it is funny because like we have a lot of traditions that kind of funny whether we talk about them or not. But just like the traditions might not be the right word, but muscle memory, I guess. But it is funny. We get to a hotel and there's always that moment where like Greg and I look at each other. If Nick's there, he's probably like I hate him doing some other shit. I don't he's probably at Pete's or something. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a long time since we had a big field trip. Yeah, yeah like, it has been a while. Been. I mean, SGF, but. That was Even different. that was very worky. Yeah. yeah. But there's but that moment. Probably the last RTX we all went to, right? Yeah. 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 Which For like is every, 2019. 2019. Yeah. Um, but we look at each other and there's the moment of like, we just say the number of like how many minutes till we're supposed to meet yeah. that yeah. long. And it's that vibe of like, is this a fiver? Or like 25 minutes. Like to, to, that's the slow yeah. day yeah. time yeah. shit, you know? Yeah. And like there is something about that moment in time that no matter what it is, it always feels exactly right to me. You know what I do with that amount of time? I go up, just like Greg said, put the AC on like, you know, 34 degrees For maybe. Sure. Take my socks off. Hmm. Put my socks on the AC. Andy, God damn it, I love you. I can't tell if this is a joke or not. No, it's not serious. I take my shoes off. I take my socks off because I feel like if I've, even if I've been in an airport slash airplane for an hour, the, it time works differently in an airport sure. and an airplane. Like, yeah. it, it, it's extra, it's like a hyperbolic time chamber in, in Dragon Ball Z. Like, my, my feet feel like they've gone through a five-hour, six-hour thing. Even though it's not like I've been walking a whole lot. They, I'm just in a plane, I'm crumpled up, I'm not yep. really moving a whole lot. Yep. My, feel, my feet have gone through extra in that time. They've extra, lived a life, man. Extra, <laughs> And so I go... Hey, but here's what that the movie is. <laughs> here's what Andy's doing with his just feet. just staring at it. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Love is telling me what to do with my socks. And so I turn the AC on, I take my shoes off, I take my socks off. And I put the socks on the AC. If I have 20 minutes, I'm just kind of like there, stretching my toesies out, kind of just sitting down, just maybe wash my face a little bit. That's almost like a shower for me, just to get the well, socks off. Socks. So, so are you putting them on the AC because they're like sweaty? No, because I like feeling the coldness when I put them back on. Because I feel, oh, it's a little jolt of awakeness, Joe. Cold socks, huh? Yeah. Never, yeah. I never done that. I never thought about that. Yeah, and I. Man. I don't know. Like if my I would feet don't. Put... My, I don't get like sweaty feet. I just like it's just like a nice thing to put on. It's like a. In, yeah. It, it's like sleeping in, in fresh sheets. You know, like you sure. can feel the difference. But I get that though. But that, why that... would you just put on a new pair of socks? I mean, I don't want to waste socks like that, Jim. <laughs> you know I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just like I understand. Like we just did the laundry. Like, oh my god, I'm about to put on some fresh me undies. Like yeah. the, the sheet's gonna be nice. Yeah. Like, oh, there's that nice warm oh, feeling, yeah. you know. If a little dive into that shit, the cloth just big dive feels into differently the shit. against your skin. Yeah, yeah, all of it. But like cold, I get the wanting the jolt of the wake up. I mean, that's some weird, it's weird shit, Andy. But like, I, I appreciate you thinking outside it's the sleepy box all the time. It just feels good. Yeah, it just yeah. it just feels good. But it just, just there's something about you know like a a cross country or just the flight that even if it's just to L.A. Feels like your feet have gone through seven hours in the two hours that it took you to do that whole trip. So I just kind of like refreshing my feet. Yeah. You know? Fair enough. It's, it's when I don't have enough time to like do a body wash. I'm rarely going to 
say like, oh, let me go take a full shower, then I'll come back downstairs. Yeah. Usually because of my hair, because I don't have to dry it, and then reapply mm. all my Rogaine uh, hair foam sure, Minoxidil. Of not, yeah. So I'll usually just Hair's like, great, though. thank you very much. I'll usually just take the socks off or whatever. If I do have enough time though, then I'll do maybe a body wash, just a quick little scrub down. Yeah. You know, get the nether regions, sure, to, you, got you know, it. feeling got a little it. bit more fresh. Sure. Go to the Gosh. party, not feeling like you got swamp ass. You know what I mean? I get it. We haven't had Twice a good, yeah, bullshit trip in a while. Ass. I mean, COVID got on the way, but obviously. But you know what I mean? Like, we have yeah, a good what? A good bullshit trip. Like, SGF mm -hmm. was work. We're going there. Let's see the games. Yeah. Let's report on them. You know, like, when we would go to Comic-Con, and it's like, all right, we're here for eight days, and we're doing two panels. Like, What's I was thinking about that, man, because you you did it right this year. You went in, got out, yeah. did your job. You got to see people. It was cool, whatever. I was thinking about it, though. Like, good there, for hire, there yeah. were years at Comic-Con that, like, we would be there. We lived there. Like for seven days, yeah, and that never felt good. Like it never felt like a good use of anybody's time. <laughs> and like you, you'd get lost in it. Where it's like, it'd be like, oh, it's it's Friday, and it's like, wait a minute, how is it Friday? I've been here three days already. I have three days more. Like, yeah, it it was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it's and it's hard to rip yourself away. I was, you know, like coming back here, it felt like I had been away from work for like a week when I'd only missed two days of actual work, right? But you got it. But then people are texting me on. Saturday of like, am I coming to the party? I'm like, I'm gone. I've been gone for you know 24 hours. I've been. I'm, I'm. I got a tangent story for you guys. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, every once in a while, you reflect on your life and you have that I like, do. damn, I made it. Take moment. A shoe you know what I mean? Take, yeah, <laughs> maybe put on the AC, put mm -hmm. a new one on, and get fresh a little cold. Fresh socks. And like, I to think back at all the cool things that we've done and like m specific memories that I had of like dreaming of one day doing something, not even dreaming of it, being like, I'm never gonna do that. Comic Con was like more than a bucket list thing to me it was like i would fucking die if i could make it to a comic-con thinking it was so impossible and that it would never happen in any way shape or form and here we are now been to fucking 10 of them and it's always awesome freaking love it lived up to everything that i ever wanted it to but i was trying to think like how did i even know about comic-con like mm -hmm. how did how was i as a, a younger person understanding that this thing existed and whatever what age was this um i mean probably like I mean, all the way up to 15, even, I would say. Wizard Magazine. Like, was, there's magazines and stuff that you'd see stuff, but, like, to me, E3 meant something. Sure. Comic-Con felt a little bit different. Um, well, it was very different back then. It was different, and also I wasn't into comics. I liked the idea of comics, but yeah. I watched Spider-Man on Fox. I didn't mm. read yeah. comics back then, you know? Um, but it was a show that I always confused with a different show. There's King of the Nerds, but... Nerd of the Kings. There's a, there was another one which was like a, 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 a reality game. game show. There was a dating nerd show yeah. that I want to say was geek? on Beauty, Beauty and the, the Fucking Geek. geek. What you guys? Thank yeah. you guys. What are these shows? Season one was a there was a Mizzou girl on it. So was Beauty and the Geek yeah. is a dating show where it's they on take Fox, yeah yeah they take a beauty and they take a geek and you make them date wow. and then it would be like a team battle essentially of like a attractive woman and like a nerd guy and like what an looking guy. they have to learn about each other and like learn about each other's worlds and shit like that it was you know dumb five seasons of this show. really wow good for them one of the episodes, what five episodes. <laughs> was them going to comic-con like, oh, like okay. they're going, and they, they had some challenges and things they had to do and that's what, what introduced me i'm like oh my god it is like this giant place there's so much cool shit people are in costume like i wanted to do it so bad anyway i was obsessed with it with this one episode of this freaking show that like was just such a dumb show but being a 15 year old kid i was obsessed with it um it was years later like at this point it was during pandemic that I thought about the show, just had this moment of thinking, but everything I just explained to you guys, thinking about Comic-Con, where did I learn about Comic-Con, all this stuff, had the moment, King of the Nerds, I'm like, wait, no, it's not that, yeah. Beauty and the Geek, boom, had this light bulb moment, YouTube, Beauty and the Geek, trying to look it up. Time. Find the Dan Reichert auditioned to be on the show. I was like, that's, I thought there was some touch. Yeah, about we it. talked about this a couple of years ago, yeah. and I, there, on YouTube, there is, like, I don't remember the exact connection to this, but, like, Dan Reichert either auditioned to be or was on <laughs> Beauty <laughs> and the Fucking Geek, which makes so much sense knowing Dan Reichert. I'm like, of course he was involved in something like this. How did you, wait, oh, so this, these videos exist somewhere out mm -hmm. there? Yeah. Dan Reichert, Beauty Dan and the Reichert, Geek. Dan Reichert, my Beauty and the Geek audition tape, 10 minutes long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kevin, just because I want to glance at ten, how, however long ago this How was. dated this looks. Yeah, right? <laughs> this yeah. has got to be, what, like 16 years ago? Yeah, 2005, something like that. Like, God. I 
He I, up, only uploaded it five years ago, but it's very clearly. Oh, okay. Than that. Okay. Yeah, it's funny because like I, uh, I, I get these two shows confused a lot um, because the King of the Nerds, I think it was called, is a show that Lasercorn from Smosh, or okay. formerly Smosh, was on. That's what kind of like gave him his like jump off point. And then uh, it was one of the two shows. I don't remember which one was hosted by Lizzie McGuire's dad. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Bald dude, kind of balding guy. No, no. It's the guy from Amazing Revenge of the Nerds. So it's probably King of the Nerds, I imagine. <laughs> I've never seen that. Oh, I think uh, you even seen that. We need to do Nerds in Review. Yeah, heads up, Reven Revenge of the Nerds in Review. It would there'd be a lot of questionable content. Oh, yeah. that way. It doesn't uh, hold up yeah. super. What well, are you gonna right? do? What are you gonna do? They're movies. They're, they're, they're here. We go. This is Dan Wright. Well, he's auditioning as a geek. Yeah, well, he's, he's, he's auditioning as the beauty. That was really funny. That was really <laughs> funny, Tim. Let's see what Dan's got up his sleeve here. <laughs> How do they not pick him? <laughs> you know, right now. Hi, my name is Dan Reichert. I'm 21 years old, and I'm here in Lawrence, Kansas, right now. I'm obviously trying Kansas. to be one of the I mean, on the show. You can just screenshot it. Everybody who lives in Lawrence still lives in a place like this. <laughs> but, uh, basically, this is like a pretty uh, nice one bedroom. As as I can in my life here. It's gonna be kind of hard to do because a uh, trash can in the back is what he eats out of. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody in Kansas. <laughs> Like I said in the interview, I play an absolutely absurd amount of video games. Um, I know I said that, but a picture... He's so mellow person. compared to, like, the Dan Riker <laughs> uh, we know now. I was going to try to get all my games out here, but I... Uh, That's the problem. You go back and watch so any of your old clips. You're not who you want to be. You know what I mean? <laughs> I watched some Greg Vio, some reviews. Like, I don't know. You, you want me to jump forward? Oh, or? my God. I love that <laughs> PSP. PSP. Yeah. Oh, right my here. Tons and tons of games from there. PSP looks so good. Oh, look at that Metal Gear Solid figurine. Is I love that this is such like a kid's like I'm gonna put all my stuff on the table. <laughs> <laughs> look at all my dirty I am. <laughs> yeah, jump jump ahead. Hold yeah. my stuff. <laughs> Let's see if there's any burger or a hot dog besides meat and cheese. <laughs> still eats like this, still still has this exact feeling. <laughs> The palette has not evolved. I respect it though. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Great jump. Audio down. listeners, he just aged shit playing basketball. Uh, my apartment, uh, pretty much how I live. But uh, That's how I live. <laughs> those glasses too are just like perfect. And, uh, I had those glasses. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was just a statement. That's just how it wasn't. Oh look, here oh, we go. Oh yeah. Shit. Guitar Hero behind the head. Nice. No, no looking. Uh, these are the newer games. Tim, here. and he's rocking uh, the DLP TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah the dude. Digital light stuff. projector uh, TV. Most currently, since I Those TVs games. weighed like Huge. nine thousand. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My dad had one, and it was like a pain in the ass. If those any ever, if those ever an issue, I think like my dad had it for so long that they gave him a new TV because of how long. Like Best Buy was just like, dude, we. They don't make these lamps anymore, but you've bought the, you've extended this protection plan for so long that like we have to just give you here's a plasma TV because like they don't make that fucking yeah. lamp anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are so disgusting. But that was my first HD experience. Oh hell wow, yeah, dude! Like I remember plugging in Madden and be like, "Why is it? Oh, there's a little switch on the thing. It goes from HD and like." widescreen we're like whoa 720p this is Dude. crazy <laughs> hell yeah man this show is so awesome <laughs> i i just love that that exists that yeah. dan did that like actually auditioned for this show and like that the, I mean, the show exists whatever it was but like yeah. it's just so so funny i, I, I also think about how dan Riker today would be on that show in a heartbeat oh yeah you know what i mean yeah. if he wasn't married yeah. you know what i mean yeah. but yeah. like oh yeah character wise and yeah, everything yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um i also think like the first few times that my parents would drive up to Austin to meet me when we when I was gonna go hang out with them after RTX. Where you gonna eat? Fuckers, baby. Yeah, you were. You know it. You know it. Um, just how like seeing people in cosplay looked so like silly and frown. Like it was kind of my family would be like, "What are all these weirdos doing dressed up?" And now they just understand that that's just part of the culture and it's not weird to them at all. But like, I remember the first time walking into a, a, one of these conventions and not expecting to see all these cosplayers and be like, this is fucking weird, dude. All these people are dressed up and like, this is what they do. How is this? Like, I, I didn't even, I couldn't even fathom how odd it was. And now it's just such a staple so much so that 
I really want to hit Jessica Negri up because I want I want a Clive to do Halloween costume. You got to do it. And like that shit's gonna. I will, I will send you my measurements. You know, super tall, six foot three. But totally crushed. We it. could. I I really want. You know, whatever whatever it takes the pleather, whatever materials are are required. Like I know that she would do a kick ass job to make a little Clive outfit. I've been looking into Sid, Andy. Oh. <laughs> It because he wears like this blue leather thing, and I'm like, this is fucking cool, yeah. man. But it's uh, it's just too much. Like, but my thing is, it would be I really would, hot. It'd be really hot. Yeah, yeah. And he has two swords. Like, it's yeah. like yeah, bro, you're doing a lot, one man. sword totally doable. Two, <laughs> two swords. swords. <laughs> like, it's a whole thing. Kevin, can you throw up the video? I just gave it and dial it to like 10:43 on the on the old uh, run. I'm some wizard. So this is a video that uh, circulated a while back, a year ago. Uh, the the sad, cr the crazy, sad crash and burn story of Wizard in Toy Fair magazine, which is close, near and dear to my heart. Hit play. One. What's great Me, about this is that there. if you pause in one second. Here's Greg Miller. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. Walking in of like, that's me and my dad at uh, Chicago Comic Con, which of course became Wizard World. We went there every year. And when this popped and somebody put it, uh, put it on the subreddit, I believe, and then uh, I saw it and got to watch the whole thing or whatever, it was like, what a flood of memories. Because I, me and my dad went there and the only photo we have at any of these is that one of me, him, and Spider-Man, which was like from the first one. It was a Polaroid. We paid however much for him from the booth or whatever and never, ever thought to bring a camera and take photos again because you're just going to Comic Con or yeah. Wizard yeah. World. Like, what does it matter? And so to have this fucking time shot of me, first off, both of us looking so pissed off to be <laughs> on camera as we come through so, this thing. He looks like he's escorting you out. My classic, <laughs> like you were a troublemaker. Classic <laughs> Superman shirt, my backpack slung over there with all the well, books I'm going to buy. Only one shoulder for the backpack. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, I, think it was, I think it was a messenger bag. I think <laughs> the it funnier thing about it, Kev, can you bring it up the picture one more time? Is it's like, you look at this and you're like, all right, cool. Yeah, that's that's a version of the Greg Miller like ca cartoon character outfit. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, the, the jean day, shorts, the Converse, wear. the Superman shirt. Some form of this. Definitely thing. wearing my Superman watch there. Your dad, though. Yeah. I don't think I've ever not seen him wear this. No, that's my dad. This that is your dad, dad dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like, dad was, I, we saw your dad last week. Last week. This is your dad. Can we just say how how good Greg's dad looks, dude. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Like yeah. he just like he, he, aging like a fine one. Seventy three. It's not like I like really? knew him before that, but he just looks so youthful and spry. My favorite part was shortly after. No, it might have been. I forget when he visited in the timeline anymore. But was he sunburned when he was here? I don't think so. That doesn't look like he, he got he no because he went to Alcatraz. And he got sunburned to the point of feeling like blisters on his forehead. It's like, Dad, wear sunscreen. I don't need it. And then when we called him on it, and we were like, why didn't you wear sunscreen? He's like, it wasn't even that hot. And we're like, that's not how the sun works. That's not how the sun works. Uh, my it dad, was 65 know, degrees. <laughs> number one crane operator, Greg Miller, you know, out there mowing the lawn every Saturday morning. First thing, he never wore sunscreen in his life. Oh. You know, I'm sure this will never haunt him or whatever. He's looking great. Yeah, exactly. We'll see how that all plays out. In the he end knew my name, unlike Mike's dad, who was like, who was that kid who looked like he just woke up? <laughs> like, thanks, Mike. I'm glad you tell your dad about me. I'm on camera with you every goddamn day. That. Mike's best friend. <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kind of Funny podcast, and you can support it by going to patreoncom slash kind of funny. Of course, over there, you can get each and every episode ad free. You could be watching us live as we record it. Of course, you could also get a bevy of bonus episodes, more than 300 since we launched the spare bedroom. There's a lot of cool stuff on patreoncom slash kind of funny. But since you're not there, here's a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Did you know it only takes a few seconds to get it? That means if you go to add it to your laptop or iPhone right now, you could be done before this ad read is even over. And you know what else works fast? Honey's deal finding abilities. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. When you check out, the Honey button appears. All you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons can find for that and then if it finds a working coupon you will find the prices drop we've saved thousands of dollars thanks to honey buying costumes props tech over the years honestly not using honey is just silly honey doesn't just work on desktop it works on your iphone too just activate it on safari on your phone and you get to save on the go getting honey seriously only takes a few seconds and by getting it you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show you can get paypal honey for free at joinhoney.com slash kind of funny that's joinhoney.com slash 
kind of funny. This episode's brought to you by Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures just like Mike likes them. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. And every purchase supports the Shady Rays Impact Program, which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life, from childhood cancer patients to young adults with serious health conditions. Exclusively for y'all listening right now, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code KINDAFUNNY for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Again, that's shadyrace.com. Use code kinda funny. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. We all know life can be hard. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. I know from experience how often it just seems easier to care about others and keep it moving. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. For more balance with BetterHelp, visit betterhelp.com slash kind of funny today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash kind of funny betterhelp.com slash kind of funny Damn, i thought we already did the ad break no we did the intro we, we, the we, we hadn't done the ad break. yeah wow yeah. for some reason i thought you were wrapping up the show and that bummed me out because i, I thought you were going for a question you guys done yet. Would you we like were one? all all over the place right there can i can i uh hijack this one more time yeah right? I, just, you know like, how the show goes is just four or sometimes five best friends hanging out with each other Segwaying from thing to thing to thing. I don't know how we started at Shark Week and never even finished talking about that. Or I guess we did. Yeah, we did with a little fin. We well, no, about Shark I mean, Week I wanted to talk about how, you know, they were pitting uh, megalodons against great whites and talking about it's a bloody megalodon. who would do better in a fight and talking about like uh, these two species, by Isn't the way. Isn't the megalodon way bigger than the great white? It, yeah, absolutely, which is a crazy right. sentiment. But yeah. don't ever discount what like Jason Momoa can do because he's hosting. All of Shark oh. Week, it's like his thing. Yeah, yeah. and also it's fighting the shark. Uh, dude, I, I, my he's got like his, he's got his, the size of his head shaved, and he's always like in every shot like. Eh, and he's Is got, the like, rest all of the his hair long? Yeah, yeah, he Ooh. looks really, really good. Um, but he's eating up the scenery. He's chewing up the scenery, chewing up the ocean. Um, but did you know, Greg, that Megalodon and Great White they existed at one time oh, together? No, but they but they show like the size differences between because they've recovered. The two jaw skeletal yeah. pieces of the megalodon and the great white, obviously, and like I'm talking, Greg, like the megalodon m might fit in this room. Wow, like just end to end, yeah. really, really large. Yeah, and that's about all. That's all I listened to because I started playing David the Diver. Oh, oh it's so fun. Really yeah. liking it. Yeah, really cute, really fun. I got to download this. So oh, it's okay. such a U game. Holy yeah. shit, man! <laughs> it is such a U game. Look at this, dude. Dang. Megalodon, eighteen meters, fifty nine feet. It's Great white shark, Megalodon. six mega uh, meters, twenty feet. So they were putting they were pitting them against each other and being like, who would win the agility test? Ah, uh, and they'd be like, a great white. Obviously, it's smaller, it's faster, more agile. But like in terms of just raw jaw power. Like the megalodon, it's a bloody megalodon. <laughs> what a what a phenomenon Shark Week is. It's wild. Still going on. Yeah, I remember living at home and that being a thing. Yeah, Good Where, for them. I, you figure, I feel like we should have covered it all by now. What sharks are up to? Well, remember when they when our second Their VidCon? Content. I think we went to like shark. It was when Discovery was like really going into revision three and like the digital side of stuff. Shark Week was at VidCon and like they were shooting mm -hmm. like like that like the main bits of it where they had all the hosts and stuff. It was a giant shark like skull. I don't remember any. Though we got to go inside. Um, was Scott it Bromley though? was there? Yeah, that I believe. Yeah, that makes <laughs> yeah. sense. Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, who was there? Scott Bromley. Bromley. Oh, okay. Uh, Carboni must have been there, right? But we didn't know. He was there. We knew him. We didn't like him. We loved him. <laughs> I loved him. Yeah. yeah. He's an acquired. Hey, Carboni is legitimately biggest glow up ever. Oh yeah. yeah. Ever. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like, he's always a good looking dude, but it's like, he went from being like a fucking nerd to like a very good looking guy. He went yeah. from being the geek to being the beauty. Mm-hmm. He did. Yeah. Wow. He did. <laughs> really came full circle. Did there. you like that? Yeah. yeah. So that reminds me, the reality show thing. Dan Reichert auditioned to be on a reality show. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I, lot, I watch a lot of reality shows. We do. It's one yeah. of our things. Would we ever want to be on a reality show? That's a different question, you know? <gasps> I turned it down. Great question. Yeah? yeah? I got hit up by somebody who wants to be on a reality show. They had a connect. They were wanting to introduce me. And I was like, yeah, totally. And then the guy followed up with, like, you'd have to be off of content yeah, for, like, yeah. nine months. I was like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand. No, 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 no. Fuck that. Fuck no. that. I but can't let Nick have that much freedom here. Y'all know that one of our favorite shows in the world is Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. Uh, Emmy nominated Vanderpump Rules, by the way, this season. I was watching an episode of Family Guy, or no, American Dad. And uh, Stan, the main character, was, I don't know what what the plot was of this moment, but he had a Vanderpump Rules poster <laughs> in the back. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I really wanted to take Fuck a photo. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the Empire is expanding, um, and they're opening a new restaurant in Lake Tahoe. What? Oh, All right. This is very- it's called Mike! Wolf, which is just awesome. Yeah. Wait, Wolf? Uh, Why one? I don't Who know, knows? but it's fucking cool. Oh, okay. Okay? Gets the people she going. She the Vanderpump Gardens in Vegas. Now there's something primal about like Tahoe apparently I don't fucking know it seems super random but I'm really excited because it's like uh three blocks away from Mike's place wow so I feel like this is our our, our in uh yeah. Mike really will good let about you it. stay at his house and he'll sleep in his car naked yeah. classic <laughs> Mike uh but yeah I'm, I'm hoping that somehow this ends with Mike sneaking into the the launch party of this because he knows a guy or something no, yeah. you know yeah, door um, boy Danny yeah. but in addition to that um they announced that Lisa Vanderpump is getting a a new show on Hulu um called uh Vanderpump Villas the whole thing here is that worldwide celebrity entertainer Lisa Vanderpump <gasps> has really dope places and she wants to throw your parties in some of the most extravagant scenarios ever. Yeah. Um, they're like, if you have a bachelor party, bachelorette party, a divorce party, a this party, that party, you can apply whatever. So I'm 1,000% fucking applied for this shit because it's not a nine-month thing. It's just a one-episode type situation, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I've been working on my my pitch, my yes. application to see how this all goes. Um, but she loves Pomeranian, so we're allowed to invite a certain amount of people, and we have to put headshots of them. So two of my people include Boost and Toretto. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, we're going to fucking get this yeah, shit. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, so anyways, I'm, I'm really excited about this because – I fucking hope more than <laughs> anything I get a party thrown for me from uh, Lisa Vanderpump, and y'all will never hear the end of it. Mm-hmm. Can I come? We need to figure out the logistics of this. Chris. Yeah. All right, because the the current current situation we have is six. You have six spots. All right, Moose. So well, me and G. Yeah. yeah. Um. That's then good. we have uh, Joey and Gia's sister Jenna, obviously. Yeah. yeah of oh no, no, we have eight spots. We have eight spots. Then Moose and Toretto are counting. Of course. Then I was like, who? What are the two other the X factors, the two people? And I had to rack my brain a lot about, about this. I ended up with Andy and Nick. <laughs> sure, fair, fair. Just because I just feel like the idea. The content, because the, the because content. Mike's going to get in anyway somehow. <laughs> and, but honestly, I thought Mike's about this. come by with the tray. He'll yeah. be in the white. Hey, you go, yeah. jabroni. He's like, happy. Yeah. I'm back out of it. <laughs> Thinking about this, I was like, I have a feeling they're not actually going to count Moose and Toretto as people. So then mm-hmm. I was like, of course, we're being a gr- big Greg Miller. There's one other spot that I don't know. And I we got to play the casting game right here. I don't know the type of game I'm playing here like i don't know yeah. i'm applying for this and there's always that like awkward do they want us to have followers or do they mm-hmm. not want us yeah. to have followers like do i lean into like what we have or do yeah. i try to protect i think you gotta else? lean into it because they find so it too. fast enough and i think they'd be into it what you need to do with this final slot and or two because mm-hmm. i don't need to go i don't know what the fuck's happening i'm just giving you a hard time we just throwing a party what i think you lean into is i know this show is very popular sneeze? i'm getting ready to yeah I was trying yeah to you've been you. you've been doing the Go sneeze. No, I won't do it. <laughs> what you need to do is lean into the popularity of the show. You've been fighting for like an hour. <laughs> You've been leaning into the popularity of the show, right? In what celebrity person do you know that also likes the show? Oh, and I know. And this is your chance to hit them up and get them to come. Yeah, it's Jerry O'Connell. Oh, was that like, I didn't know if there was an actual answer. No, I don't know. If, no, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jerry O'Connell fucking loves it. Yeah. yeah. Jerry O'Connell, if I hit him up right now and said, hey, come up here next week, he'd be here. Like, you know, that's, not, <laughs> that's, a, that's a waste of the vote. I'm talking like Barack Obama. You know what I mean? Uh, so, you know what I mean? Well, here, I like how big you're thinking, Greg. Everybody's, everybody's into Vanderpump now. At this point. Even people that weren't into it, now into it. Stephanie Bayer just mm-hmm. announced that she finished all of it. Oh, wow. Oh, because John Lawrence Lawrence watched into it. all of it. Stephanie yeah. and Lawrence. Thank you. Yeah. She did. Stand up she was like, Lawrence made me watch it all. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah, right. John yeah, Drake watched all of it. Like, John we're Drake getting, watched it all. We're God getting a lot it. of like 
Uh, now, John I'm, Drake see, would be a great invite. See, I'm thinking like, <laughs> you're right. John Drake, you're right. we owe for WrestleMania, went above and beyond for that, and he will be either loving it or hating it, but he'll always I be grumpy imagine. about it, and it'll be great. John, we take John away from Andrea and the baby. We make him come <laughs> to wherever the fuck these he villas are, and he's it. stuck with all of us. Ah. He's going to have a great time what and a, have it be his worst nightmare. I'm thinking, because I think you're on the right path with this, Greg, yeah. like a Zendaya-type character see the problem like I, we like are olivia rodrigo like that type of celebrity where they're massive yeah. but i feel like we're we going to you're going to top level like i feel like that's like in, in, obama is just like throughout there but Selena obama, Gomez. well she, she's doing that martin short movie i show, commented you know? on on one of her uh on her on birthday her picture her what's jack quaid her? doing now i commented on her, on her no jack quaid we can get anytime we want reality shows allowed during the actor strike uh, okay. Yeah, of course. They're not acting. Yeah, uh, this is all real. It's all real. <laughs> Sorry. Story. No, I was just saying. I commented on their birthday uh, photos from recently from Selena Gomez. I commented. I was like, "Thanks for the invite. I couldn't make it, but I hope you had a great one." You know, <laughs> just see what like all the other commenters think. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna back. You comment on all. Chrissy uh, Teigen. She's really into Bravo. I'm sure. But yeah. Is that? I don't. I still don't really understand what. Like, Chrissy Teigen could work. Echelon. You're trying to launch. A well, I mean, realistic. Like Mandy Moore. Like you can't say Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift wouldn't come. Mandy Moore might be realistic. <laughs> I do. Well, I know Thank you already you. kind of said this, but like realistic, and you started with Obama. <laughs> like, I know, I know. I said yeah, I fucked yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, I fucked yeah. it up. I apologize. <laughs> I'm just a man. I know you all look to me to be man, perfect all the time. I'm just a good. Mm. But keep it going. Are, keep it going. Don't we have to know these people in order to like add them to our? That's the roster? thing about this that I'm a little bit also like hazy on. And what mm. is this show? You know yeah. what I mean? It's like a brand new it's, show, so it's hard. Yeah, because like it's uh, a lot of people. Uh, I found out about it originally from TikTok, where mm -hmm. someone was TikTok. Hey, there's a new show being cast, and then of course everybody I fucking know was like Tim, Tim, yeah. Tim, Tim. <laughs> so it's like we got to do it. Um, and I've been I've been slow playing it, like working on my uh, not audition, but like my little pitch. Application. Jack Quaid yeah. as Christopher Nolan. I can't tell if Chris Nolan's a cool dude. He's a cool. He's a cool dude. I think, he's but he's like a cool kind of funny yeah. cool dude. Uh, mm, I, don't I think he's so. too buttoned up. Oh cool. god. Oh, god. Uh, here he, we go. I just here we go. I just. I think Christopher McQuarrie could be like a kind of funny cool. Let dude. me just say before this little thing happens, Nolan. I think is. Oh no. I just saw an interview with Christopher Nolan when they were like, "What are your remote drops? The movies that when they're on, you drop your remote and you watch it." And he's like, oh, "There's a lot of them." Uh, Kyle Dick Knights, definitely. <laughs> Being first to last. Really? Yeah. He's a big first uh, a Fast and Furious fan, too. Yeah. Love cinema, dude. Are they? I guess we're just asking about. <sighs> Jesus, here we go. Nolan more. and not the movie. I'm a, Leave a message, please. Oh, yeah. Good enough. Please record your message. <laughs> When you have finished recording, you may hang up. You think up he just has Greg blocked now, so it always goes straight to voice now? Jack Quaid, you motorboating son of a bitch. How are you? It's Greg Miller. You're on the Kind of Funny Podcast. Don't worry. This isn't going to violate any of the strike stuff. I just need to know, is Christopher Nolan a cool dude? And what I mean by that, of course, is like, do you think he would fit in with Kind of Funny? We would, we're would. we never going to ask you to introduce us. This is just a hypothetical. Of like, He seems like a really... like. Like, I, he seems to me, as somebody who doesn't know anything about him, like, he'd be a buttoned-up director. He wouldn't be, like, cool with us. Like well, is he going to come here, and is he going to have a cocktail with us? I don't think so. We need to know if you think it was. Andy thinks it might be because of Tal Talladega Nights. If you need to know about draws, call me back. <laughs> call back to the very beginning. Of the <laughs> I got him, guys. Yeah. I got a yeah. show up here. I, oh, I get it. I get it. He was the bunker. Jack Wade. What about him, man? I feel like, it, like, oh, I, yeah. I just no, don't but know. Greg said, like, I'm yeah. saying this is your chance to get somebody we couldn't normally get. I get that, but I don't. I think if you're just inviting our friends, sure, yeah, Jack's great. So I know Jack has. I don't know that he watches Vanderpump, but I know he he watched Bachelor mm. at least for a while. We talked about that at the Spider Man premiere. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Vanderpump though. Huh? Somebody in the chat said Mina Kimes. I mean, I wouldn't he, be surprised if she watched. It. Yeah. I can't remember if I've seen Vanderpump specific content. Katie Nolan. Yeah. Katie Nolan loves reality TV. Oh, yeah. She uh, like the amount of Katie Nolan podcasts I listen to where all he talks about is Below Deck. Mm -hmm. And Below Deck. One step Below away. Deck. Below Deck is essentially, I think, what they're aping for this show. Yeah. Because every yeah. episode is like a new party crew. Yeah. Hmm. More Jerry O'Connell love there from the Lou. I mean, Jer Jerry O'Connell's already in. Jerry O'Connell, like, hosts Bravo stuff. So yeah. it's like, he's as, as in as we want. Although, this is Hulu. 
Can we get Bob Iger on the phone? <laughs> Have a couple I words Bob for Iger that man. Bob Iger has some like other bigger things he's trying to Nothing's figure out right now. bigger than getting me on Vanderpump Villas, yeah, okay? Nothing. I am best friends with Shaq. You all right, big head eyes. That's true. His, Shaq's kids love watching my content. Mm -hmm. We've been over this. Mm -hmm. About six years ago, but and I don't think it was true. <laughs> 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 Who else should we fill in the Moose and Toretto spots if they don't count, though? Well, that's the thing. One would be Greg, and then there's the there's just the one extra yeah. spot. So ben. it's like, but the yeah. problem with this is like, and this is why I, 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 <laughs> I might be scheming too hard on this because it's like I don't know how much they're actually fucking looking into all these details. But like, I need to pitch them on what the party is, and it's like I don't fucking know. So it's like a, we're we're pitching bachelor bachelorette joint situation because we both want to be there. Mm -hmm. Wait, what do you, okay, so are you talking? You saying you don't know what the party is? Are you talking about? Give me a second. Give me a second. You guys keep talking. I'm gonna slack Kevin something, but I need to go to my computer. I'm looking through. This is. Uh, I'm looking on Vanderpump Rules. Famous people that like them. All right, Us Magazine. Zoe Dashnell. Okay. Mm. Okay, I like that. Candace King. I don't know who that is. Dylan O'Brien. I don't know who that is. Dylan O'Brien. He's like an up and comery. Issa uh. Rae. Oh, good Issa Rae. Is. I can't remember. Dil mm, Dylan O'Brien's like O'Brien the guy that was in the All Too Well music video, maybe? I think so. Yeah, you're right. Thing. You're right. That's yeah, me. I, I, Let me see. Yeah. Got a beard. Oh, yeah. He's been in a bunch of like. He was always like the heartthrob, but like yeah. back in the day. Or 50 Cent, apparently. Huh. You can, uh, uh, Chloe Kardashian, you're never getting her to. No, but she is the best out of the Kardashian. Kaylee Cuckoo. I don't think I like her. Oh. Why? Um, I just think that I haven't found a TV show that I've liked. Her. Why am I that offended? I don't know. <laughs> Are you like a big fan? I don't know. Not really. Now, this is an interesting one. Emma Roberts. Oh, oh. My God. I've been in love with Emma Pulls Roberts. Pull some strings there. Life. Selena Gomez. Oh. Come on. I'm to do it for you. And the Neopets ambassador himself, John Legend. <laughs> See, exactly. Well, here's the thing. It's a Hulu show. So maybe we pitch Tim and Gia's bachelorette party as a Murder mystery, and we invite Selena Gomez oh. from Only Murders in the Building. Huh. And that's how you start the, that's how sparks will fly. Yeah. You know? And then we have a, we get a follow-up love story when you and Selena get married. Think about met that. on the show. You started the show right there. Yeah. You started your own thing. Where'd Tim go? He, he said he's going to show. He to said, get something. He said show t he showed him. And then he I think he's slacking him. Kevin some important information. He already, it's, I see the Slack went through already. Though. No, yeah, he sent me a link. I'm, Where's I'm he? Sure at? What do he do? Maybe he's is he gonna be okay? What? Is Kevin, is he puking? Is is the streak ending right now? <laughs> I'll make. No, I would have no. so many podcasts about, like, just like a, a, he, here's a story about date time with Selena Gomez. We went to Benihana. Yeah. We went mini golfing. Sure. We went bowling. Is she single? Yeah. Okay. Oh, she's like, it's a meme. With how single she is, okay, she's the type that's always making content about her being single. Got it. Which makes me just think like you, two content, just creators. like me. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying, dude. We really got to push for this, Greg, because then she's BFFs with Taylor. So you get to be. Got it. Good. Perfect. I love that. Exactly. So like, we just really got to all get on board with this. Mm -hmm. Tim's resetting. Yes. He's, did you send what you needed to yeah, Kevin? Yeah, Kev, I sent uh, a link to assets. This is just the like the application page here. This looks fake, right? <laughs> it, <laughs> it does look really... Does. But it all does. of these casting websites look exactly like this. Yeah, so I think it's kind of like them trying to be a little bit under the radar because they're not trying to get mm -hmm. overloaded with, with applications and stuff. Something about the show, I mean, it's not like bachelorette or bachelor that they're like every time you watch the show they're promoting the link to to be yeah. cast and like do doing nationwide casting calls and all this shit like i think this is just a fucking link that like maybe somebody clicked on you know yeah. but i'm sure people will be applying for it i just feel like we're well suited for this yeah the other another you should be able to do this remember when i got i got a call about the master chef when i auditioned they just conflicted that year with uh extra life so i didn't do it and master i never chef. i forgot about what it. about Josh Makuga. I saw some, I think it was Melissa Hagler in the chat was suggesting somebody else, but then she said Josh's name. I mean, yeah. that's pretty, mm -hmm. that's good. I mean, so I my problem like is I, I feel like this bachelor bachelorette party is, is getting a little bit bachelory, oh, you know? Okay. Um, we have you, G and Jenna. What's yeah. up? What does that mean? It's getting a little bad. A lot of dudes. Oh, sausage party. They call it, you know, mm -hmm. Selena Gomez is a pretty good answer. Though. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. She's a fan. That's mm. what Greg just saw. Gia, yeah. Jenna, Joe. Not of us. Don't go. <laughs> I think the <laughs> best friends. Yeah. 
It would totally work. Gonna fit in perfect. Three peas in a pod. Does she tweet a lot? Should we tweet a Selena Gomez about this? No, she doesn't tweet that much. No, she's more Instagram TikToker. Yeah. Okay. You okay. could just go find the comments that Andy makes on them and reply to those. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about threads. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's a brand new platform from this guy, Zuck. We all know uh -huh. him. We, maybe you didn't love him, but you might love him more. There's not a lot. Uh, threads right now, a very positive place. People just chilling out, having fun. You know, we've all seen the drama happening on X.com, right? People don't, even, don't even dignify it. I want it. We've that all seen way. what happens when you zeet. You know what I mean? It's a happening. That wasn't there. true, it's by the way, right? What? I think that was debunked. The whole zeets thing. She said it in a tweet, but I don't think the page. In a zeet? That's it. <laughs> zeet. I don't want to turn threads into a negative place. Oh, fuck. <laughs> But you will. <laughs> but you want to talk Sounds about like me <laughs> minding my own fucking business just to catch a stray for no fucking reason from somebody I always thought was a very nice person who I thought was on the right side of justice. Huh. But today, I'll settle my beef wow. with Alana Pierce. Whoa. Whoa. Two weeks ago. That's right. That's how long I've been thinking about this. <laughs> Two weeks ago, Andy Cortez, a gift to the internet, Honestly, one of the top threaders I know threads this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know what that means. To all my hot cosplayer friends, I will temporarily, re temporarily refrain from liking your posts on here because my reach and visibility is so massive mm -hmm. on this platform, and I don't need every little freak calling me out for being horny on main. Just know that I will continue to support you and your content from afar. Thank you for your time. Heart emoji. Mm -hmm. From Alana. No, that's Andy. Oh, from Andy. That's okay. what Andy Cortez threaded. That's who either. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing. He threaded it. I like every goddamn post in the world. And then you got little freaks out there being like, oh, Andy, you're liking this post. And it's like one of our hot cosplay friends in yeah. like wearing nothing, basically. It's like, okay, well, am I just not going to like their post too in addition to all the goddamn Gundams I'm liking? <laughs> Why don't you call out all the Gundams I'm liking, huh? <laughs> Because you're a bunch of fucking little freaks. Get out of my life, you parasocial freaks. Andy Cortez anyway. says this mm -hmm. to try to, of course, make threads a more forgiving and better place. Mm -hmm. Make sure his, his, his many friends who cosplay mm -hmm. yeah. in scantily clad outfits don't yeah. feel ashamed that they're not getting as many hearts as they usually get. Andy Cortez. I don't want them to the think that I don't like their content. And so what happens next, ladies and gentlemen? Alana Pierce enters the chat. All right? And you thought she was supportive of her friends. And I'm using air quotes there, her friends. You know what I mean? But she, she responds to Andy with this. It is really funny that every NSFW picture I see on Instagram always says, liked by the Andy Cortez, <laughs> Game Over Greggy, and others. <laughs> Alana, yeah. it's not my fault that <laughs> Megan and Jess are just out here posting whatever and I'm with Andy I like it I, we had a whole report. conversation with Meg Tony on this very show about it what did like, I is it weird that I like that because you post like no I want people to like it I'm like great alright I like it what did I reply to her with what did I reply I support artists and their art Alana whether it's a simple sketch a full blown painting or a thick dumper I'm tapping the heart <laughs> And I'm hard that I miss that Andy. Oh I have a lot. Oh, I, I can't I, do it in this fuck. I hate goddamn threads. I, <laughs> yeah, it's it's just like, I'm. Uh, uh, are those the only posts I'm gonna not like? My friends in their cosplay? No, I like every fucking post that everybody's posting. It's the reason I follow these people. Yeah, it's because I say, oh, your friends and all, oh, you did good stuff. Yeah, I only like posts I like. <laughs> but he likes. All I mean, I see him pass somewhere. I'm like, you need to post yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's that about? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, mean, I get like, supportive. I mean, I guess sometimes like, but like, it's a, it's a conscious choice every time. Really? No, yeah. I mean, I just like. I, I don't like people that just like everything. No, but I I love click and like I like it on a lot of fan art. I thought yeah. like yeah, a lot of people hate the for you page on Twi on X now. Yeah, on X threads. I always kind of liked it because it's I like it. it was always a lot of uh, fan art for Dark Souls or Bloodborne or Zelda or whatever, and there was like always awesome art that turns me on to new artists that I didn't know exist. Turns me on too. It gets I'll tell you what it gets me really turned on. And I'm just going to like all the posts, you know. That's their art, all right? Big boobs and big ass, that's your art. I'm going to click like, yep. okay? Yep. If you made an awesome sketch of Leonardo da Vinci drawing a sketch of a horse, yeah. then I'm going to click that. This is the one that goes that. around. This is yeah. the one that goes around. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to click that too. 
All right, I it, man. I'm I do think it's funny. Like, a lot of pointing that out. I just think it's funny how much Instagram like puts motherfuckers on blast because like it's it's like it's funny that it's YouTube, but like it's extra funny that it's always two people and others, and it's just like, <laughs> damn, why those two people? Like, yeah. why are you blowing up their spot? I think it's because Alana knows we're tastemakers, and she of like course. follows our recommendations so closely that mm-hmm. yeah, when we say the, the algorithm that's knows. a thick juicy ass, <laughs> like they want to make sure everybody follows. <laughs> follows. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> then things are thing, and I'm gonna click like on. <laughs> you know what it, I mean? You know? And then while we're here and just th- tossing me. out thread criticism the biggest downside to threads jared petty's back you know what i mean because <laughs> I mean? when, tw- when he left twitter <laughs> i'm kidding jared i love you you're just at the top of my feet you're just at the top of my feet <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this has been the kind of funny podcast each and every week four sometimes five best friends gather around this we table you, each coming to hang out so and talk with each other about whatever it is they want to talk about if you like talking with us you should go to patreon.com slash kind of funny where of course you can watch us record the show live be in the chat get the show ad free get more than 300 exclusive bonus episodes of content and of course get exclusive merch your name red etc 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 if you have no bucks to toss our way no big deal of course you can get the show on youtube.com slash kind of funny and podcast services around the globe each and every week until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you (laughs) it got me real good man